Dias or U.S. District Judge William Q. Hayes, U.S. District Judge Kathy Ann Benchabango, United States Bankruptcy Judge Christopher Latham, United States Magistrate Judge Ruben Brooks, United States, States State Bar Board of Trustees and a candidate for State Bar President. Uh, is it Ms. Rosen? Oh, maybe you should turn the ring on us off. <laughs> oh, you know, I, I only started practicing law about 20 years ago. The basic rights to which they are entitled under the law simply because they cannot afford a lawyer. Think about this. To put it very simply, stripping away all of the rhetoric. Access to legal assistance oftentimes means, and this is a, a, a reality, it means access to health care, to safety, food, and shelter. Only about one-third of the low-income population in California receives any help for any aspect of their legal needs. There are currently somewhere in the range, and I've heard various statistics, somewhere between 6,000 and 10,000 eligible clients for each legal aid lawyer out there. So this is where you come in. All of you are going to embark on a different path. You're going to have jobs in the private sector, the governmental sector. Some of you are going to work for nonprofits. Some of you are going to go out to business. Thank you so very much, and I explore the admission to practice law in California. For those of you who, in the audience who don't know, they've spent years preparing for today. Title IV, Division I of the Rules of the State Bar of California, otherwise known as the Admissions Rules, and Section 6060 of the California Business and Professions Code. Kevin Lang, who will administer the oath. Stand. Raise your right hand. Repeat after me. I do solemnly swear to support the Constitution of the United States, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the government of the United States, that I will maintain respect due to the courts of justice and judicial officers and that I will demean myself as an attorney, proctor, advocate, solicitor and counselor of this court uprightly, so help me God. Congratulations. Uh, 
Constitution of the State of California or the Constitution of the United States changed you? Well, for one thing, your status has changed. You're now lawyers, attorneys at law, ESQs, Esquires. You've taken on responsibility above and apart from the rest of society. And people will, and I'm sorry, congratulations to all of you, and thank you for letting us share in this moment of happiness today. It's a little awkward to me. But I'll tell you something else unique about this court, and I will say that probably next to adoption court, this is the most feel-good court you're ever going to be in. So enjoy it. I'm sure everybody has celebrations that they're planning for after we're done here today, and I recognize that I'm one of the last people standing between you and those celebrations. So if you want to get up and stretch a little, I've got about 25 minutes. I'll try to get away. No, I will, I will be brief, I promise. Uh, I am president of the San Diego County Bar Association this year, and on behalf of the association, it is my privilege to welcome you to the legal profession and more importantly, to the San Diego legal community. I think over the course of your career, you will come to realize that the San Diego legal community is one of the finest legal communities, not just in the state of California, but in the entire country. So welcome and enjoy it. We are a big little town where relationships do matter. And as Heather alluded to with her all-encompassing cell phone, and we know about our computers and our laptops and our tablets and our social media and all the electronics that we have available to us and how we communicate today is so different than when I first started out as a lawyer. I would encourage you to get out of your office, turn off your computer, put down your cell phone, get off the social media and go out and actually meet people face to face in our legal community. Shake hands, establish relationships and friendships because those friendships and relationships will carry you through your legal career. You'll have plenty of time, believe me, as Joe mentioned, late at night in your offices, take the opportunities that are out there for you in this great community of ours. To that end, as the saying goes, you can lead a horse to water, but you cannot make them drink that water. At the county bar, we have very specific programs that we have developed for you, our new lawyers. CLE events, networking opportunities, mixers, and programming that is specifically designed to make you a better lawyer and to introduce you to other lawyers in our community. But of course, if you're in your offices and you don't come, then those programs aren't going to work. So I would urge you to please participate in the opportunities that are available to you as new attorneys and take advantage of everything that you can. A lot of uh, programs and associations in our community offer free admission to new lawyers. So take advantage of that, please. I want to echo a little bit about what Joseph touched on, and this is my final point, and I think my most important point, and that's on the topic of professionalism. You are entering a profession, not a job. Professionalism is a cornerstone of the legal profession. The one thing that we all learned in law school was to zealously advocate on behalf of our clients, and we absolutely shouldn't do that. But unfortunately, some people take that to be a license to do or say anything in the pursuit of that zealous advocacy. There were three words in the oath that you just took, the first oath that you just, just took. Dignity, courtesy, and integrity. And that was just very recently added to the oath for the California State Bar. There is an art to disagreeing without being disagreeable. Many, many times in your legal career, you are gonna take a position that your opponent just refuses to agree with. That's what the courts are for. 
If you make it a personal attack against them or their client, you are doing nobody any good and you are doing a disservice to the profession. More importantly, because this is a big little town, you will likely be seeing the same lawyers over and over again through your career. So if you pick a battle with them every time you see them, what's going to happen? It's just going to be war, and that is not in the best interest of your client. As far as I'm concerned, integrity and stability are the bookends of professionalism, and professionalism is the cornerstone of your legal career. Every new lawyer in this room today has an impact on the public's perception of lawyers and the legal system. And let's face it, it's not necessarily the greatest image out there, is it? No, it's not, and it's sad. So everything that you do impacts the public's perception of lawyers and the legal system. And that's not just in the courtroom or in the conference room or in the mediation room. It is everywhere you go and everything you do. Because people who know that you're an attorney, if they see you engaging in uncivil conduct, acting rude, there's no differentiation between your personal attitude and conduct and your professional. And that all comes back to roost on us. And everybody here wants to improve the image of the legal profession. So I urge you, throughout your legal career, to strive to do everything you can to improve the reputation of the great profession that you have joined today. Congratulations.